So we've each of each of the ATMs is relevant to lifting, to supporting, to being organized for yourself, to be able to make these practices. This practice of of lifting this and turning this this way and this way is exactly what you just discovered that you've looked at the way that I'm generating this movement in my pelvis from my sit bones from my leg into the, my pelvis from my leg into my pelvis I'm coming away from this foot and I've made this translation and I've kept myself in the position where the movement can come through my spine and I'm not pulling across and I've kept myself in the place where I have the support and I've met the criterion of how is it to work without changing the tone of my arms. Yeah? Can you imagine in 1983 or 1984 or 1985, with the little bit of experience I had taking, taking classes, and, and I have to in, figure out what in the hell that means. If, if you would have been left with that message, all, it's, all I did was walk in and said, the secret to the work is learning how to work in such a way that you can move, lift someone's head without changing the tone in your arms. Great. Figure that out. Bye. <laughs> Would you have known how to investigate that? Yeah. Yes, yes, maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, yeah. You, Maybe, maybe, hopefully, much less. But we, but I hope that we've done is we've we've played with the criterion, obviously, of how do we, how do we investigate something like that? Yeah. The other great one that Moshe that I heard when I had very very bad plantar fasciitis. So I'm listening to Moshe one day, and he says, "In walking, you find the head of the fourth metatarsal." And he says. Walking, when you're walking, it's like your legs are like a wheel. So now I have two bits of information. And I, I don't even know at that point in time, when I have this difficulty, what the head of the fourth metatarsal really represents. Yeah. So it took me years to uncover and to talk with, and to talk with pedorthists, and talk with physical therapists, and talk with with people that are Feldenkrais practitioners that are teachers of anatomy and physiology at different, at different universities and things like that, and just start asking about these questions, about the, the nature of the, of the bony structure of the foot and what it means, the fourth metatarsal, and why is the fourth metatarsal important? Yeah? What are these relationships between the inner part of the foot and the outer part of the foot? Yeah? Now, hopefully, again, I've helped you solve the riddles for these relatively difficult things, but somewhere within, someone's going to say something to you that you're going to, it'll catch something within you and you're going to go, what does that mean? That you haven't had the time to, how will I investigate the substructure of this statement? Yeah? And that's, Feldenkrais was the most curious man I ever met. We were in New York City one time, and we were going to go for, he said, would you like to go for a walk? And I said, yeah, let's go for a walk. I thought we were going to walk around the block and down, down to the corner and come back. Halfway down the block was a camera shop. Moshe had an avid interest in lenses and camera and film because he worked for a period of time with cameras in the movie industry between the World War the end of the war and before he went to Israel. He got involved with the, with the film industry a little bit. We walked into the shop and I thought, well, we'll look at this and that. He had the guy pull out every single camera in the shelf and opened every one up so he could see the reflex action and see the action and see how the thing, and, and he sat there and he figured out the f-stops and he was sitting there and he was wrapped, absolutely wrapped for about two hours. <laughs> and I went, holy moly, you, <laughs> you wonder, where did, where did this come from? How did he sit down and figure out all of this, the 600 parts of the knee, the muscles, the ligaments, the attachments, the points, the joints, and then out of this begin to figure, imagine, 
what would be the perfect way for force to come through my knee when my knee has been so badly damaged that I dislocated it and they wanted to amputate it when I was 19 years old. And that was what they wanted to do. They wanted to amputate his leg because they thought he'd be better with a prosthesis than with his knee that he dislocated playing soccer. Yeah. We're so fortunate that he dislocated his knee. <laughs> And he, and he damaged his knee again later, later on in his life when he was on a submarine and he slipped and fell. Yeah. He, he was escaping Paris and with his wife, he had the lab notes for the Curie's laboratory in a suitcase. He had two suitcases that he had to get. He was trying to get to the last boat that was leaving for England. He was actually put in an internment camp in England because they didn't know who he was and his papers were lost and whatever else. And it was during that, that time that he found that his knee that had not bothered him since he was in school, all the years of judo, his knee hadn't bothered him. But when he's trying to get to the boat, his knee blows up. We're so fortunate that his knee blew up and he asked, how in the world is this situation that's represented in my life, how is it creating the conditions in myself that physically something that hasn't happened to me since I, inter since I broke my knee is now, and he had the curiosity to go, and then he had the curiosity to go, well, what would be the best way for me to find the movement through myself? It's remarkable. Yeah. Okay. Please roll on to your right side for a moment. 